Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome here from Caston High School. And the Junior Varsity Contest between the Rochester Zebras and the Caston Comets. Going to get the starting lineups here for the JV teams. Coach Bowers is going to go with Eaton, Clevenger, Strasser, McCarter, and Bullinger. And Coach Samantha Shane Lobb is going to go with Finky, Hinderleiter, Sprow, Hutzel, and Harsh. Five starters for the Comets. to go up against Finky here for the tip. And we are underway. Strasser just inside the three-point line, bounces off, and it's going to go out off of McCarter and be cast in ball. And they're going to call a double dribble on Hindelider. Turnover for the Comets. Swings it down, good pass. That one's deflected though, steal by the Comets. Coming back the other way, nobody stops the ball. Good job of recovering there by Bollinger. Eaton into Bollinger, kicks it back out. Clevenger for three, good. Riley Clevenger gets the Zebras on the board with the three-pointer. In the lighter, and that's going to be five seconds. Good defense there by Lily Eaton. <laughs> Pulling her inside, goes to her left, and Hutzel, let's see, was there a foul called? They're going to call the foul on Audrey Bollinger. Her first, team's second. Three-pointer on the way off the mark for Hindelider. Thank you. 
Rebound by Finke. Still 3-0 here early in the first quarter JV matchup. Nice pass inside, and that one is put in by Finke. Gets the Comets on the board. Eaton thought about a three. Going to reset the offense. 2-3 zone here for the Comets. Eaton out to Clevenger. Clevenger thought about a three. That one was tipped by Hindelider. And Coach Bowers wants a timeout. It's going to be a full, so we'll take one with them. We'll be back here in just a moment. Rochester won their opener on Thursday against North Judson. Kasten only played two quarters of JV the other night against Argus. I didn't get the uh, results of that. A lot of teams struggling with numbers this year. We're hearing a lot of JV cancellations around the area. Ella McCarter, three ball, short. Rebound goes to Sproul. And a three-pointer, Sproul puts the Comets ahead for the first time here this afternoon, this evening. The Carter 15-footer short, and the rebound by Finke. Going to be tipped out of bounds. It will remain Comets basketball. Third game of four here for us today. If you count JV and varsity, we were at Pioneer earlier this morning. The Pioneer Panthers got their Season underway with two victories over Tri-County. Really looking forward to uh, this varsity matchup coming up next here. The cast and Comets kind of had a little coming out party at Rochester last year. And the freshman class that was so good last year, 15 wins for the Comets. It's going to be a turnover there for... Kasten calling a uh, walk. And they're going to say that was a two. Okay, so we've got, uh, I think they actually got one of the refs that's going to be doing varsity suited up a little early here. And he's going to be Filling in uh, for uh, Casey. Hopefully she's all right. Pete Duvall joins me here. How are you doing today? Pretty good. So uh, have you seen, did you get a chance to watch any of the Argus casting game the other night? Or I did. I was, I commentated on it. With oh, yeah, you were, I should have, yeah, I forgot you guys went up there. So I watched a, a good portion of that game and, uh, Things, the comments, you know, obviously, as expected, looked pretty good there and picked up a nice win. And Varsity-wise, this should be a pretty good one again here tonight against the Zebras. The Comets went up last year and, and won at Rochester, so I'm sure Rochester probably has that in the uh, forefront of their memory banks. Yeah, I'm sure they're not forgetting that game. Clevenger thought about a three, passes it in. Bollinger, nice look. Off the mark with the shot. Think he comes back across the timeline for the Comets. Fifteen footer, no good for Annie Harsh. You know, one thing I like about Hindelider, she always seems to wear number four. 
So you always kind of, whatever sport she's playing, it's, there's, there's number four. I wonder if that's Hindelider, and it, it usually is. Yeah, it's always nice when uh, the girls or guys can get the same number all year long so you know, uh, so you can remember who they are. Finky with the put-back bucket for the Comets. Puts them back out in front, 7-5. Strasser gets into the corner there, and uh, that one's going to be over and back. So a turnover for the Zebras. Forty-six point six to go here in the first quarter. Underlighter for three, couldn't get it to fall. It's going to be out off of Rochester, so it will remain Comet ball. Take it out under their butt basket. There's a steal by McCarter. See if the Zebras work for the last shot or if they're going to try and go quick here, maybe get a couple opportunities. Nice pass into Bullinger. Shot off the mark, but she's going to go to the line to shoot two. Big game here tonight, Pete. We're on uh, the web, on IHSA TV, on RTC4, and plus... We're on Channel 4 on RTC Cable as well, so we are all over the place tonight. Puts the pressure on me. Well, I didn't mean to do it that, but uh, it's just a big game. Two of our schools playing, you know, it's uh, an early season girls game that uh, figures to be a really good matchup here. Rochester's press almost takes care of the ball. It's going to be tipped out. McCarter's going to tip it out. So it will be Kasten Comet's ball with 6.7 to go here in the quarter. Strasser with the steal, and uh, that'll do it. End of the first. Kasten leads 7-6 over the Rochester Zebras after one. Take a break and come back with second quarter action here from Caston High School in just a moment on RTC TV4. I think Autumn lost her job, Blair. I, I don't know where she is. <laughs> That's all right. I got it. I think for the varsity game, I might just do this and, and produce and let you and Pete and, and Val okay. do the commentary. I'm okay with that. Works for me. You want to handle play-by-play -play or you want, to, you want me to keep going with it? Uh, how about you run play-by-play -play and we'll do some color? All right. Well, what's Pete going to do? Uh, he, he'll color in the lines. He'll color. He'll color the color. <laughs> I color outside the lines. All right, that's a, that's pretty important. If we got two color people, I told him we're on, not only on RTC four on IHSA TV, but we're also on Channel four in Rochester too, here tonight. So, made him a little nervous, I think. Man, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to count better and stuff then. Yeah, Blair, you're gonna actually uh, have to keep up with those stats varsity game. Uh, yeah, we got enough people here. We better have some good halftime stats. <laughs> no got, excuses. We've got my uh, trademark pending guaranteed almost correct stats. Carter gets it out to Clevenger. Clevenger's going to push the ball up across. Twenty-three is Eccles checking into the game. Her shot's off. Hindelider comes up with that rebound. Yeah. 
That one's tipped away, and Clevenger comes out with it. Those uh, over-the-head lobs, those are always such risky passes, but you see them all the time. Yeah. Three-pointer, Clevenger off the mark. The rebound to Annie Harsh. I'm pretty sure that Harsh just pivoted on both feet. Like yeah. One after the other. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes they don't catch that. If, if you get away with it, you got away with it. Right. Foul on Eccles and timeout for Coach Shane Lobb. Let's see what uh, full timeout. We'll take a break with him and be back here with more on RTC TV. Didn't see uh, Pete. How did the JV? I know they only played two quarters against Argus. Uh, how did that go the other night? I believe the cast and JV lost. Can't quite remember the score. But uh, I did notice that. In the first two quarters of this game, there's been a lot less fouls than in the first two quarters of those game, that game. Okay. There is a steal by Dara Strasser. My daughter played on a uh, summer league team last summer with Joe McCarter and, and Dara, and a lot of these Rochester girls here were on that. And One thing I noticed about Dara is she is very fast. You can see it there as she gets into the uh, passing lane. And a three-pointer for Eccles. Puts the Zebras back out front, 9-7. How to shell with the board on the weak side. Gives it over to Clevenger, brings it across the timeline. And that one is tipped and picked off. Hutzel goes coast to coast, shots off the mark. And coming in with the block is Weaver for the Zebras. Comets will have the ball out of bounds under their bucket. Hindelider gets into the paint. Might have gotten away with a travel. And what do we got here? Thought I saw him call a foul, but. And foul on Zebra's number 40. That's how to shell picking up the foul. I think that's her first. Mia, how to shell. Hindelider looking for a driving lane. Good defense there by Clevenger. And a travel called on Annie Harsh. Zebras lead 9 7, 344 to go here in the first half. We are still in the JV contest. Lady Comets have to be careful about leaving people that wide open. Just inside the three point line, shot off the mark for Strasser. Harsh brings it up, kicks it up to Hindelider. She's going to take a three left wing. No good. Harsh in there, gets the offensive glass and puts it in for two. Ties it at nine. Weak side rebound, and it's going to be a jump ball. Possession arrow to the Zebras. Olivia Thomas checking in for the Comets. And I'm not sure what has been aggravating her, but I know that she's been having to spend some time with the trainer in this last week or so, so it's good to see her out on the hardwood. Eccles tries to get it in. And that was Thomas with the steal, so coming in making an immediate impact. Thomas a 5'8 freshman forward. 
pretty good size here for the Comets, 5'8". That's yeah. Take every inch that you can get. Nice kick over to Weaver, left hand shot, and Zebra is back in front, 11-9. Quickly ahead there. Nice move that time by Fink. He got into the paint, but lost control of it. Out of bounds, though, off of Rochester. Really good ball movement there that last few 10 seconds or so by the Comets. And you can see with that, it kind of opened up a little bit of a lane there, and Finky was able to, uh, to get something going. It's a good mix here on this JV team, some freshmen and uh, some sophomores. Quick hands by Harsh, but she got swatted down there. Look out with Strasser with the block for the Zebras. And the steal coming back the other way, Hindelider. Close, close with it a little too hard. Harsh gets the offensive glass. Kicks it out, Thomas's shot is off the mark, but it's gonna be, looks like out of bounds and it'll be Comet's ball here. Harsh barely avoiding that five second violation. There's a steal, that's why I was talking about the speed of Dara Strasser. She'll draw she... the foul there from Hinderleiter. Dara's gonna get a two from the free throw line. Be the first on Hinderleiter, only the second team foul on the Comets here in the first half. Freshman Dara Strasser off on her first free throw. Second one gets the fortuitous bounce. How do you like that big word, there, uh, Blair? I don't think I brought enough money to pay for that one. Then. <laughs> Ninety seconds left here in the half. Called, I called Val Blair earlier, now I'm calling you Val. Yeah. Three-pointer, Hindelider ties us at 12. And if, if Val's listening, he's probably really offended by this point. I don't think he's on yet. I think he was doing something this afternoon here before the varsity game, so. The Carter can't get it to go. Think he coming down with that rebound. Comets looking to take a lead here. Eccles brings it across the timeline for the Zebras. 48 seconds to go, and that one's going to go off of the Zebras out of bounds. Lily Watson checking into the game for the Zebras. 5'7", sophomore. In the lighter, no good. Rebound Weaver. Weaver's bringing it back across. Nice pass in to Strasser. Strasser left hand, no good. Offensive glass by Lily Watson, and she's going to get fouled and go to the line. Blair, I was talking to uh, Pete a little bit ago. You guys were up at uh, Argus on Thursday night with yep. the Comets and the Dragons. Uh, what were your thoughts on that game? Uh, well, I lost a quarter of that game to technical difficulties as well. But um, And it wasn't as bad as I thought it was when you said you were having the issues that you said you were having. Mm -hmm. it, it actually, if you turn it down low enough, it wasn't terrible. 
Uh, there was a point where it was, but it wasn't as bad as I thought. When I got home, I was like, oh, man, this is going to be bad. <laughs> well, and there at the end, we switch over to the computer microphone. Anyway, um, so only playing uh, two quarters of JV. Really didn't get a good sense of the uh, JV lady comments there. Uh, but with it only being two quarters, both teams used their fouls. With of course, Justin. the lady comments did uh, send a couple of the Z lady zebras to the line. So they'll want to, I'm sure they heard about that in the locker room too, about cleaning that up. In the lighter, three pointer right where she left off at the end of the first half. That's how you open up a half. She hit a three that tied it. Now she hit a three to put the Comets ahead by three. That's another one of those oddities uh, sometimes of basketball. There's Riley Clevenger, and she puts it in. I was just going to say, sometimes you have a, a low-scoring first half, and a couple girls get hot. Next thing you know, you got twice as many points in a quarter as you had in the whole first half. Rochester putting on a full-court press there, <laughs> trying to get the comments to turn over the ball, which yeah. they do on the jump ball. Yeah, Harsh trapped in that corner, and... Running the sideline can be such a dangerous gamble for situations like that. Yeah, um, and she she was getting triple teamed almost, and she had a couple of people wide open who just could not get the pass off. Strasser baseline kicks it over Bullinger, and that one is tipped. That first tip by uh, Sprout. Maddie Sprow. Yeah. Foul on Finky. Drops it to the line to shoot two. In and out. I think uh, Strasser could be justified in calling that one stolen. Puts that one in, and that gives the Zebras a one-point lead. And Strasser fouling there. That'll be her second, team first here in the half. Aggressive full-court press here by the Zebras. And McCarter forces Harsh over to the sideline, and she loses it out of bounds. So a turnover for the Comets. Carter three ball just a little bit long. Harsh across the timeline. Zebras playing a pretty tight man-to-man -man here. Comet struggling to adapt. Harsh was looking for Hutzel. Good defense that time by Bollinger. Been really impressed with uh, Bollinger here. She had a great volleyball season, played a lot of varsity as a freshman, and she's really had a great summer of work and, and has improved her basketball court game as well quite a bit. Foul there called on Lilith Eaton. That'll be her first, team second. Well, you know it's a big game. The band is here tonight, Blair. Yeah, I was actually just uh, talking late last week with our new band director, um, and he's really striving to make sure that he's being very equivocal with coverage and trying to really amp up the number of events that the band is at. Yeah. And then they're also working on doing some recording so that any events that we where we can't have the band, we've still got the band. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Mr. John Allender really coming in and and just stepping up in a big way in that role. High pass there, tipped away to the Zebras. Uh, stolen back, and there's going to be a foul. If that's Strasser, that'll be her third. It is. <laughs> ah. 
Mia Hadeshell going to check in for Dara Strasser. Picks up her third with 4.45 to go here in the third. Enderlider across the timeline in a hurry. Harsh right wing, a little long. Offensive glass. And one, Alexa Finke puts it in. Great ball movement there by the Comets. Offensive glass too, that gives them another opportunity and Finke going to the line for Foul. the and one. Foul there on Riley Clevinger, her first. Team fourth. And Finky puts it in, the three-point play. That's Ooh. getting three the hard way, though. Yeah. Puts the Comets back up front by two. McCarter baseline three short. Rebound to the Comets. They bring it back down across. Thank you for three. Off the back of the rim. Maddie. Offensive board and then Coach Sam Shanla calls for a 30 second timeout. I tell you one of the uh, casting comments that I've seen quite a bit over the years is uh, Katie Hutzel. And I'm really impressed with her uh, progression from last year to this year. She um, looked a little unsure of herself in junior high, and, and she's really playing with a lot of uh, tenacity and, and doing a really good job. I'm really impressed with how she has grown as a basketball player. Yeah. Yeah, and it, well, and it also helps that uh, this JV squad, they've played together for a while, and you can see, I mean, there's still some tentative things. They're getting used to being on, on the high school court, but... Uh, but you can also see that relationship and how it's how it's in there. It's just pretty amazing how uh, this class of sophomores here at Caston has just made a tremendous difference in the in the whole culture of this school. Oh, yeah, absolutely. In the lighter, and they're going to call a jump. And that should stay Caston. <laughs> That might be the shortest amount of time that two players have their hands on the ball that I've ever seen caught a jump ball. Right. Good and Carter there. got, yeah, Carter got a piece of that. Kicked out, and a good job. Hindelider comes in and gets the block, and she kind of, I don't know if she thought it was just going to go straight out or not, <laughs> but she looked at it for a minute, and I think there was an opportunity to grab that ball. That ball just kind of was yeah, hanging it, there on the sideline. It, it, it hit and bounced kind of dead. Yeah, it's like a uh, you know chip shot by a pro golfer. It just checked <laughs> up and didn't didn't really spin like you thought it would. Hustle tipping that ball. Harsh getting the getting the steal in there. Then Hustle with the offensive board and uh, put back, no good. And that's going to be off of the Zebras. Comets lead by two, under three minutes to go here in the third in the JV contest. Rochester Zebras and Caston Comets tonight. Harsh looking at double coverage here. Good pressure there by Clevenger. Still not across the timeline. Just do get it across. Harsh. Harsh. Yeah. Open look. No good there. Carter just about uh, dribbles it out of bounds. Keeps the control. And that is going to go off at of Eaton out of bounds. So the turnover is mounting up a little bit here in the second half for both teams. This pressure by the Zebras, good move there by Coach Phil Bowers. Clevenger knocks it out of bounds. All 10 girls on the hardwood look really tired right now, though. 
Thomas is going to come in for Hutzel. As you said that, Coach Shane Mob must have been listening to you, Blair. Good trap there in the corner. I'd say she was listening to the broadcast, but we know there's a 30-second to 60-second delay. So, Oh, rattles in and out there. Sproul for three. You long two. Off the mark either way. Nice look. Bullinger, though. Good defense by Harsh. Clevenger tips it away, and Eaton comes away with it. Trading turnovers here. Saves me from moving the camera down the other end of the floor. McCarter, three ball, just short. Underlighter with the rebound, takes it back. McCarter's a great three-point shooter. When she starts hitting those, they go in in a bunch. She can hit six or eight of them in a row. Hinderleiter into the paint. Tough drive there by Hinderleiter finishing with the left. I don't think she's left-handed, is she? No, I don't believe she is. It's always good to see a young player finishing with that left hand in proper time. Trying to get it into Bollinger. She was double teamed. She had Harsh on her back and Thinky on her front. Hutzel, not a, not a big break. She gets back in here pretty quick. Strasser's coming back in with a minute two to go. She's got three fouls. Coach Bowers trying to see if he could sneak six players on the <laughs> floor there. I don't think he can get away with that very long. No. Deep three. Clevenger. Great ball movement there by the Zebras. Works a uh, works Clevenger open and takes advantage of it. Knocks out 75% of that Comets lead down to one. Yeah, good shot there on the baseline by Thomas. I'm going to talk low percentage shots. Take the backboard out of the equation. Strasser answering. A little overzealous. Larry, don't you know that the backboard isn't cool anymore? <laughs> Nobody uses the backboard. Pass down low gets tipped out of bounds by Thomas, giving the Zebras the ball with 13 seconds to go in the third quarter. You know, based on what I've seen these last few seasons uh, from layups, I, I believe you're right. Ten seconds left in the quarter. Zebra's looking to have the last shot of the quarter. Open three. And it's good. <laughs> Tie at it up buzzer. at the buzzer. What? So we're going to go into four the way we came into three. Tied at 22. I'm going to take another look. We caught that one. That uh, shot at the buzzer by Clevenger. You can see the light go off as the ball is in the air, and uh, we are tied at 22. So I can do the math on that. It was 10 10 there in that uh, third quarter. So as we go into the third, we'll take a quick break and uh, come back with fourth quarter action here from Caston High School on RTC TV4. Three pointer by Riley Clevenger ties us at 22 going into quarter number four here at Caston High School. Zebras start the quarter with possession. Offensive board there for the Zebras. Clevenger, three, good. Great ball movement by the Zebras getting her that open look. Boy, that was, uh, that was so 
almost a carbon copy of the end of the first half with Hindelider hitting the three and then coming out and hitting the first three in the third quarter. Clevenger oh. hits the three at the end of the third quarter and comes out and hits a three at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Comets turnover on a backcourt violation. So what was a 20 to 16 lead for the Comets is now a 25-22 Rochester lead. Long two doesn't fall for Eccles. Harsh across midcourt. Hinderleiter just a little short on that three. Good look from How to Shell, but Strasser can't uh, corral that pass. Eaton going to come in for Strasser. And uh, Hindelider breaks free, and the left hand layup is good. Well, I'm that's to think one she way might, to break the press. I'm starting to think she might be left handed, Blair. Either that, or that was a really, really good left handed layup. Clevenger, three. That one is long. Harsh gets the rebound on the weak side. And a little too much contact there by Riley Clevenger. Going to pick up the personal foul. That will be her second. Been a pretty spirited JV game. Sometimes you uh, get a couple teams that there's a reason they're playing JV, but these girls have some really good varsity, so their JVs are, are showing that they can play really well. As yeah. These ladies are out here on the floor looking for their chance to move up to, uh, to dress varsity, I think. Out of bounds off of Clevenger. I was almost surprised they didn't call Harsh for a tripping call there. I think it was a little inadvertent, but sometimes, you know, that, that doesn't matter, I guess, if uh, yeah. the result is the result. <coughs> but a timeout called by Coach Shane Lobb. It's a 30, so we'll keep it here. Take a look into the huddle there. The casting comments, 448 to go here in the fourth quarter. Zebras have a one-point advantage, 25-24 over the Comets. Based on what we've seen so far, this one's going to come clear down to this final buzzer. Yeah. And if, any, if the end of the third is any indication, it could be right at the buzzer. Absolutely. I see Val making his way up. Harsh gets it into Hustle. Still struggling with this pressure. And they're going to get Eccles on the foul. Her second. Strasser back in for the Zebras. There's that speed from Strasser. A little spin move in the lane, can't get it to go. Rebound, Harsh. And that's poked away from behind by Clevenger. And that's poked away by Spro, Sproul, sorry. So after all that, it's gonna be Zebra Ball. Coach Shane Lab a little upset there that uh, the comments 
didn't rush that loose ball. And that's what it's going to take. A one-point game. They've got to like, they've got to force opportunities and capitalize on everything. Brown knocks it out of bounds. Good defense there. Pulling her in for the Zebras. Zebras once again moving this ball very effectively. And virtually every time we've seen them do that, they've gotten an open look. Eaton three in and out. Rebound, Bullinger, and it's going to be a tie-up, or are they going to call a foul? Well, I think that was a foul. Yeah. Yeah, foul on Matty Sproul. Clevenger with the inbound. Into the corner. Three and a half minutes to play. Ooh. Oh, that's just a uh, unforced error there. Thinking in the right place at the right time, and it's going to go off of Clevenger. It looked like Clevenger wasn't quite on the same page with uh, whoever she was trying to pass to there and just throws it right to Finky. Coach Shane Lobb was down there calling for a timeout. For pro that's when uh, Harsh Harsh quit driving with the ball or trying to drive with the ball when she saw a coach calling for a timeout. So a little bit of miscommunication there. So that timeout, that leaves the Comets with one left. And it's going to be a full timeout. We'll take a break with them and be back here with more from Caston High School in just a moment on RTC TV4. Blair, these bleacher seats are extra hard tonight. I don't know why that these is. These bleacher seats are just unfortunate. That's the only word <laughs> we can use to describe them. A little cushioning on top. Hutzel working on Bullinger and the pass to the wrong team there. Carter gets the steal. Eaton drives around. Carter had a look there, didn't take it. Rochester really moving the ball to break this 2-3 zone by the Comets. Well, and all the Lady Zebras have to do is, is move the ball. That's the, the Comets really need to extend the zone, start putting some pressure on here. But they can't get sloppy with it, obviously. Uh, but all the Zebras have to do is keep moving the ball and run down 120 seconds here. Well, they uh, force a turnover, so the Zebras don't do that. Thomas checks into the game for Sproul. Well, they had Hindleider running again, but that time Bollinger was back there to keep an eye on her. And we're going to have a backcourt violation. Harsh with good defense, comes away with it, and then it gets over to Hindleiter. Hindleiter in double coverage, gets her pocket pick. Might have been good just to maybe slow it down. I know she had a, a lane she was looking at. 
Now the Zebra's calling a timeout. Full timeout. Full timeout for the Zebras. We'll take one with them. Be back here in a moment on RTC TV4. I mean, they don't have any players in serious foul trouble, but they're one foul away from the bonus, so. Indeliner almost got that ball away from Clevenger. And there's a foul on Harsh. Only the third team foul here in the half by the Comets. It's one of those situations where you, you like that you haven't made a lot of fouls, but if you're trying to get the ball back, you can't force them to the free throw line. Right. But you're only down one. There's a steal, so the Comets have an opportunity. Three-pointer left wing just a little long that time for Sproul. And jump ball, and... It's going to be casting ball, or they're are they going to call a foul? foul? I think they called a foul. Okay. I think he came down with more risk than ball. Okay. I, I would have said jump ball, but I'm not down there, so the foul was called. Second foul on Finky. Under a minute. Cast and coaches looking for their players to foul here. Sproul going to get called on the foul. It's still only the fourth team foul. Fifth team foul. Okay, they hadn't put it up yet. If I would have said fifth, they would have already put it up. And I said fourth, they hadn't put it up. Well, under 30 seconds to play here. Henderleiter getting called for that foul. So next foul will put the Zebras in the one and one. Nobody spent a lot of time in the free throw line tonight, so I'm not even sure how much of a risk that is. Oh, Harsh almost gets the steal, but she commits the foul. That's going to send Strasser to the free throw line. I think Dara has uh, attempted two free throws. I don't remember if she hit... I think, it was, I think she split them. That's what I was going to say. I, I thought she was one for two. So Rochester in the bonus. One and one coming up here for the freshman, Dara Strasser. And off. So the Comets get the rebound. Coming back the other way is Hindelider. Oh, she made a mistake hesitating. Still has one timeout. Jump ball. It will stay Caston on the jump. And Coach Shane Lobb is going to use that final timeout here. Get something set up with 12.6 to go. I really think Macy made a mistake with that hesitation. She had an open lane. I think she should have hit the gas and gone for it. Is that a full? Yes. All right, we'll take one with them here. Be back in just a moment. So if they get uh, caught up here, or if uh, a jump ball situation happens, possession arrow is to the Zebras now out of that jump ball. Unless they're marking down that Shane Lobb had called for the timeout before. Nope, they've moved the arrow. Yeah, it's on the on the scoreboard. That's why. You gotta Cuts go up. Oh, shot no good. And Knocked out. Be it. And that's gonna do it. Rochester comes away with a one-point win. What a hard-fought game. Yeah, and you know. You want to win all the games, obviously, Blair, but at the JV level, you just want to see your kids get better, and, and I think you could say that, you know, you'd be really impressed with the way both teams played here. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, there's highs and lows on both sides of the floor, and uh, all in all, it was a good, even matchup. It's a good game to watch.
going to be Burkett, Holloway, Thomas, Hodeshell, and Scorson for the Rochester Zebras. Same lineup they had on Thursday night. And I'm guessing if, if, if Rochester is going to be the same lineup as they did with Thursday night, that means Cammy Burkett gets the defensive assignment and scales right away. Yeah, we assume the Rochester will come on the man and put scales. Scales took wow. the shout there. Her intensity is uh, evident even in the introductions. Coach Douglas going with Scales, Harness, Smith, Yarber, and Williamson. So Caston with more seniors in their starting lineup than Rochester. That's the three. Three seniors in Rochester with starting both of their seniors. Yeah, that, and that's maybe the last key to this game. Isabel Scales, when she's on her game, she, she can dribble penetrate to the basket. Ease. Cammy Burkett's job is to stay in front of her and not let her get to the basket because when she gets to the basket, she gets fouled a lot. And it can be a Isabel Scales free throw demonstration. All right, here we go. Much anticipated matchup between the Zebras. And it's going to be Smith and Thomas. And the Zebras will start off with the ball. Holloway drives. Thomas out to Burkett, looking in to score some. Holloway three-pointer, baseline no good. Offensive glass, and that's going to be a tie-up. It will be casting ball. But that's, I don't know if that was a set play, but that's, that's kind of Riley Holloway at her best, that spot up shot. Looked like Castleman kind of like a straight switch there. On the, right on, the, on the screen. It is Burkett on scales. Nobody's being face guarded the way Sophia Frazier was being face guarded the other night, though. Williamson has to be careful on that screen. Scales to the lane and puts it in for two. And Thomas was looking for score some, and it goes off of uh, Millie's hands. Turnover for the Zebras. Boy, I've seen Brianna Yarber play a lot of basketball over the years. I've never seen her play in the post like that. But she was fighting for post position, and she helped kind of create a little alley for Scales to get to the basket. She was super aggressive Thursday night. Yeah. And, uh, of course, I, I did tell her that our hard work has done, not done anything to her. She doesn't need a headbutt now. <laughs> yeah, I saw that in the game. She got, uh, got a nice lump on her noggin, I'm sure, from that. Brianna's brother, Elijah, was on Rochester's the Rochester boys sectional team, sectional championship team of 2020. Foul there was on Zebra's number one, Cameron Burkett. That'll be her first, team first, and that dubious honor of game first. And the 12-footer harness, no good. Good offensive glass, Maddie Smith. 
She's going to go to the line shooting two. Castle getting some second chance opportunities here already. You know, we, we talked about the size of the uh, Rochester Zebras, but Caston really hammering the offensive glass. First one by Maddie Smith is good. Smith two for two, and it's a 4-0 Comet lead here early. Again, just a straight switch by Cast. Harness went from Thomas, and then she was guarding Holloway. Out of shell shot is off the mark. Burkett saves it, the right two. Gales, and that shot is off the mark. Score zone over to Thomas, and she walked. The Rochester crowd not happy about that call. They were looking for the foul on that. It was a rare miss on that fast break on that last play by Scales. Nice transition defense by Cassidy. Tipped out by Burkett. That set up, that set up the whole turnover. They don't get back defensively. Then. Score someone without a run out. Another chance there. Maddie Smith puts it in for two more casting points. Holloway, right wing three, good, Riley Holloway. Garber open look, she'll take it. That was a nice aggressive drive by the senior Garber. Steal and good job on the defense by Thomas, tipped out of bounds and will be Rochester's ball. Great defense by Alexi Thomas. Jackson in for score zone, and Dammerman, you talked about her hitting the three-pointer for the Comets against Argus, checks into the game for the Comets. Burkett goes baseline, good defense by Scales. Oh, and they're gonna get Burkett, I think, for backing up into Williamson that time. It's a Holloway. Oh, they got a Holloway, okay. Got her from behind then. That would have been Cammy's second, that's only Holloway's first. Yeah, that was just a great job of holding her position by Isabel Scales, that was just... That was just, hey, you're not gonna get you're not gonna get by me. Kelly Watson on the game for Rochester. Oh, blocking foul on Thomas. I didn't really, I, I thought the contact might have been initiated that time by Bailey Harness, but uh, they're gonna get Thomas with the foul. And that is her second, and score zone will check in for Lexi Thomas. Tonight, we've got five juniors on the floor for Rochester now. We've got a lot of height on the floor for Rochester right now. Scales, and she's going to get fouled. I think they're going to get uh, Watson. Big push there by Watson. Molenkoff checks into the game. Gives Harness a break. Dahmerman wide open down here at the post side. Williamson for three. Hit the wrong button, sorry. 
Lemon three comets. And a turnover from the Zebra Scales. Nice dish down. That's good. Patty Smith finishes with the left. Ten point casting lead here. Jackson with the offensive rebound put back. There's a bad pass, Matty Smith. That's turned over for the Comets. First turnover by Cassidy. Rochester's with four turnovers. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> Is that going to be on Scales or is it going to be on Danerman? I, it's got to be on Danerman. That can't be on Scales. They're calling, They're that. calling that on Scales. I, where was the foul on that? I don't really know. But she had all ball, didn't she, Blair? It, that's what I saw. That's what she saw because she came down, nearly went to talk to the ref and thought better of it. <laughs> <laughs> she almost yelled at the ref right there. I saw her do it. Yeah, that was a good second thought. Holloway off the mark. Good Rebound. defense by Williamson. Of course, Rochester would be just a little uncomfortable there on offense. Dahmer, an open three, off the mark. Very good transition defense again by Caston. Open three. And Powdishell doesn't hit anything on that one. So Hawes going to check in for Holloway, and we've got a timeout on the floor. Coach Jennings wants to talk it over. Eight-point cast and lead. 30-second timeout, we'll keep it here. What's your thoughts so far, Val? Cast can handle the physicality of Rochester. Yeah. They are more than capable. Maddie Smith is playing with a lot of confidence. I mean, she, she took a step last year, now she really seems like she's taken an, even another step this year. And the thing I'm impressed yeah. with, is this is the first time I've seen Cassidy this year, it's, it's not just Scales uh, that has a, a ton of confidence. Yeah. The, the other girls on this team have really stepped up their, mm -hmm. their level here coming into this year. And one thing you notice when Williamson hit that three-pointer, she was, like, prepared to shoot. Yeah. And a lot of the Rochester girls are, like, not prepared to shoot. And so Williamson, she, I mean, she was ready to go, and she got off that shot pretty quickly before the Rochester defender could get at her. Well, you saw Holloway had an opportunity uh, just a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. and, and you could almost see the, the thought, you know, I've missed a couple, do I want to take another one? And, and she passed it up. I was really surprised that Holloway didn't take that shot. I mean, if you're a three-point shooter and you're that open, I mean, you, you got to take that shot. That's thrown over the head of Scales, and it's going to be turned through the comments. So that's only the, what, second turnover? Yep. Two minutes to go here in the first period. Comets with an eight-point advantage, 13-5. There's that drive to the bucket by Jackson. She puts it in. I mean, Harness had good defense on her, but what are yep. you going to do? I was going to say, what do you do with that? Nice help defense by Stilson. Hammerman throws it away. Turnover coming back the other way. How to shell off the mark. Jackson offensive rebound. They're going to call it on the floor. A foul on the floor. It'll be Rochester ball baseline right. Maddie Smith checking back in for Dammerman. Foul was on Yarber there. Where's Laura from, Blair? Do you know? Germany. She's Germany. Okay. Three off the mark. Offensive glass. How to shell. Can't put that one in, and it's going to be out. Off in the comments. Another opportunity here for the Zebras. I think that might have been what you were talking about in the pregame, Val. 
get, get a little knee bend, get a little power to the foul. Yeah, of course so. Mm -hmm. There is an offensive or a rebound there by Hawes. Boy, Harness has long arms as a defender. She, she's a really good defender. I know we've said that in the past. And as we say that she can't a foul. A little too aggressive there in, mm -hmm. at the midcourt, I think. She had Jackson, yeah. you know, reeling, and if she would have just played good, solid defense there, she yeah. didn't really have to commit that foul. Yeah. Well, in fairness, in other games, that might not have been a foul. Mollenkoff at 5 6. Did you see her running Lily's course? Zone? Yeah. Again, he, Coach Douglas talks about his girls being competitors. They're just competitors. I don't care if I'm shorter than you. I'm going to fight you for position. Oh, Yarber's got to take that shot right there. She got a nice drive in baseline, had a 10 footer. Arms for three off the mark. Put back is good. Wallenkoff with the offensive glass and put back. That's an eight point Comet lead. 20 seconds here in the first. Seabers look content to uh, run the clock here and get the last shot of the quarter. Do they, or do they know how much time there's left? And a good play there by Scales, knocking it out with point four. And I don't know really what, uh, just a tip. About all you got time for with the point four seconds. I don't think you can catch and come down, can you? I don't. You can if it's more than point three, but okay. It'd be a quick release. And score zone at the buzzer after one. The Casting Comics lead Rochester 15-7. We will take a break. Back for second quarter action here from Casting High School on RTC TV4. All right, back here at Casting High School. And Val, we won't talk about last night, but we were over at Pioneer this morning for the Panthers opener against the Tri-County Cavaliers. And Pioneer looked uh, pretty good in their home opener. Yeah, Ashley Brooke had 32 points and Haley Kripe had 27. They scored 59 of Pioneer's 77 points and they won at 77-42. It was a, to say that Ashley Brooke was impressive would be an understatement. She was fantastic. I talked with Coach Brian Jennings in Rochester. I said, did you watch the Pioneer game? He goes, I watched it about a couple minutes and I turned it off. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't see. <laughs> I didn't take it personally. No, no, no. Not he didn't time. turn us off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I understand. So, uh, Rochester down after one. And the shot off the mark by Watson. But the offensive glass to the Zebras. Well, that was a nice little spin move there by Jackson. She didn't go to the line. Well, Kennedy, the thing about I was my Kennedy is she's going to play the game at her pace. Yeah. And she's going to make you play the game at her pace. I think a lot of girls, they, they want to rush it up real quick and fall on Williamson. And that one rattles in and out. So you were talking about Coach Guard. Um, one of the things, what was that number? Do you remember that number, what they were talking about, that she was, uh, Kennedy Jackson was doing on the squat? 440. Oh, my. <laughs> it's crazy. Drive to the bucket, and Harness with the left hand is off. That's like putting two of me on her back and squatting me. I mean, that's crazy. I can barely squat myself and get back up anymore. Yeah, Kennedy's nickname is the Equalizer. I'm calling her the Equalizer. Yeah. She is on Sunday nights on, six, on CBS after 60 minutes. <laughs> I, except on the West Coast. Except on the West Coast. Yes, yeah, I said, I said, Kennedy, you remind me of Queen Latifah and the Equalizer. She, uh -huh. she really loved that. 
score zone and good defense that time by Matty Smith. Scales all the way and score zone on the ground off of Scales. I Scales might have had a foot on the uh, out of bounds when score zone. All right, later, boy, Rochester caught a break there. They did not set up to take a charge on Scales and fortunately that Scales missed. And then a defensive breakdown and Kelly Watson drills a three. Just like that, Rochester back to within four. Speak of the devil, there's Ashley Brook. Her and uh, Coach Brook are here watching uh, scouting probably for both teams. Obviously a conference opponent for casting, and there is a nice drive by Smith. A little bit of a scoring drought there for the Comets. Watson's left-hand attempt off the mark. Back come the Comets. Wow. Smith, three-pointer. She's got the last five Comet points, and the lead is back up to nine for the Comets. Well, the Comets have now officially hit more than one three. And somebody from America has hit them. <laughs> Was that a pass attempt or a shot attempt there by Watson? Yeah, it was a pass attempt. It sailed over Scorsone's head. So you at least understand my confusion. Yeah, Rochester with a pretty small lineup here. Jackson basically playing the five. Boy, Lexi Thomas has been on the bench for quite a while after picking up that second foul. There's Hawes with the rebound. She's got three comets on her, able to get it over, and that goes off of the back of Jackson, but nobody from the comets saw it. No, 10 second call. So it is a turnover for the Rochester Zebras. It looked like, was it Hottishell actually dribbled the ball off Jackson's leg? Yeah, she did. Kasten is getting ball reversals, they're getting good shots. They, they know it's Rochester's gone zone, and they're dissecting it pretty well. I was going to say that was off a of cast, and Yarber got hit in the mouth pretty good there on that one. And I think she might have to go out here. Oh, she's got a bloody nose. Well, if that's coming from a bloody lip, but Yarber's going to have to take a break. Holloway coming back in for Watson, for the Zebras. Well, want to thank Pete Duvall. He was uh, helping us out on commentary in the JV game. He's moved over and is helping out on the camera for a varsity contest. Blair Zimmerman here with us tonight. Nice pick there. Holloway turns it over, and she's going to get called on the foul. That's just great, great effort by Bailey Harness. She just... Second on Holloway, and the sixth team foul on Rochester, so Kasten will be shooting one in the bonus on the next common foul. Scales, and that's a good job. Hawes stepped into the passing lane. Those cross-court passes are always yeah. so dangerous. Jackson goes to the bucket strong and puts it in for two. Thomas will keep it on that jumper. Dammerman checking back into the game for Molenkoff. Corson going to check back in for Jackson. Coach Jennings looks uh, pretty content to leave Lexi on the on the bench for the rest of the half. Mm -hmm. 
And again, a pretty small lineup with Hawes basically playing the four and Scorsone the five. I know Millie's not small, but kind of a smallish lineup. Let's see if they can create some havoc with Cassidy's defenders, but Rogers sitting in the zone still. Pass just a little high there. Yeah, that's the right call. That was tipped out by Hawes. A little too hot on that shot from Williamson. Burkett comes up with the loose ball. Tries to hold it up. Dammerman almost comes away with the steal. Hawes looking for score sown. And a good play that time by Harness tips it out. Rochester just needs to make the simple pass. They're just trying to make impossible passes. Well, it hasn't hasn't that been kind of their, their problem when they when they yeah, have those turnovers? I think so we've I mean, been talking about that for yeah. a while now. Yeah. Three point attempt by Holloway off the mark. A lot of it has to do with the simple thing, you know, like the, the passing angle and maybe using a, a, a chest pass when they should use a bounce pass or maybe using a, uh, a law pass when they should use a bounce pass. I, I think everything should be a bounce pass if you ask me, but, you know, Blair, Blair and I are old school, right? 90% of them should be. Yeah. It's, you, you can use a good bounce and get around a defender. You, you, you put... You're using physics to your advantage. Why would you just muscle it and use physics? Like that. Yes. Scale short. Rebound. Put back. No good. Another offensive opportunity here on the rebound. And that's how shell comes away with the ball. And that's a charge. And how Oh, no. Oh, she's holding that knee. Oh, no. She went right to that knee. So we're hoping that uh, that wasn't more than... Just a uh, sprain there. She can get back in. 2.47 to go here in the first half. Comets lead 20 to 13. Good ball movement. Scales for three. That was fantastic ball movement. It really, yeah. Really was. Great screen set there. Poked away. Scales. Watson, and she's got two comments on her, and foul is coming up here. They got, they got their choice, Dammerman or uh, Harness. They're going to get Harness. And it'll be two on Harness. Mollenkopf will come in for Harness. It's a fifth team foul on Kasten. I, li I like Dammerman. I mean, yeah. she's not just a shooter. She's a, she's a pretty pretty good defender, and she's able to dribble penetrate there so she can handle it a little bit. Oh, somebody just got teed up. It might have been Scorson or, uh, yeah. Because she was, like, flexing as she walked and ran away from the basket. Calling her unsportsman like on that. The score zone after the bucket gets teed up. And uh, we've got some Rochester fans trying to draw a tee, too. So Scale's going to shoot the technical free throws. First one just a little short. Uh, that we have seen the last of Millie for the evening. Uh, Second one good. If past history is any evidence, we are not going to see Millie again tonight. You get a tech in a game, and Coach Jennings, uh, your night is going to be over. Yeah. Nine-point Comet lead. They get the ball back off of the technical call. So all of a sudden, Rochester has, lost, has basically lost how to shell and score zone for the rest of the game. Dommerman for three. Oh, a little hard. 
put back off the mark. Burkett comes away with it. Getting a little chippy out there. Hawes, three ball, no good. And a jump ball goes to Rochester. Well, I should say they've lost Scorson for the rest of the night. Let's hope Hadeshell can get back. It's, I wouldn't want to speculate at all about her physical condition right now. but It didn't look good, though, Yeah, though. Yeah, it didn't look good. Well, that's going to that's gonna really change the dynamic of this team going forward mm -hmm. if she is out for any extended period. We'll Kasson just has all, kind of, all kinds of length on defense. Williamson, Smith, and even Dammerman. And there's going to be the third foul on Lexi Thomas. She was battling inside with Maddie Smith, and they're going to call Thomas with the foul, her third. Ninth team foul on Rochester. They won't uh, shoot free throws for that, obviously. I feel unsafe sitting in these bleachers wearing blue right now, guys. Well, just lay down on the bleachers. They're, they're <laughs> no blue. Maybe in. you can blend in. I went to the Rochester game the other the other day with my blue RTC shirt on, not thinking about the fact they're playing North Judson. Scales drives into the paint, shot off the mark, and the rebound by Heinzman, who just came into the game. And we got a tie up, and that's going to go to the Comets. Scales, though, just a touch off here tonight. She's, uh, looks like one for six or and one yeah. for five from the floor. And Scales just went out. She's got a bloody lip, her nose. So that's the second Comet player that has uh, gone out of the game with something bleeding on her face. 24-15 here in favor of Kasten. I didn't see who called that timeout, Val. Coach Douglas called it. Cast full timeout. Full timeout. I, I think that might have been. There was something he wanted to call. I don't know if that was because the scales was bleeding, but yeah, it was Coach Douglas who called it. All right, we'll take a quick one. Be back here in just a moment from Caston High School on RTC. TV. All right, back here at Caston High School. Fifty-six point five seconds to go in the first half. Comets lead by nine. It's going to be Caston ball. I think Isabel Scales had both a scrape on her elbow. And I think she has a contact lens issue. Well, and then she, I saw her, uh, she thought yeah. she was uh, done bleeding, and then she ran back over to the trainer. I think she's I got a bloody nose and oh. contact, and then uh, something going on. Yeah, there's all kinds of things there. Good defense by Burkett, and the Zebras come away with it. Hawes pushes it up ahead to Watson. Three-pointer left wing is good. Watson with the three. That's it down to a six-point Comet lead. And that one's going to be out. They're going to say Jackson tipped it. Cass unlucky to retain possession there. That pass had a lot of heat coming into the post. Yeah, and that call, that out of bounds call could have gone either way. Yarber almost loses it. Dammerman it over goes Dammerman, and she's going to be out of bounds. Jackson held her ground. Turnover number six for Caston. 11 turnovers for Rochester. Sorry, Laura, you're not going to just lower your shoulder and run through her. <laughs> Five seconds to go. Good defense by the Comets, and, they and they're not going to get a shot off. Wow, what an eventful first half. Well, you're getting your money's worth here. This is exactly what we talked about. Val had mentioned, you know, paying for the whole seat and but not needing it because you're not going to use it. And this has been one of those halves here. 24-18 at the half. We're going to take a break. Come back with thoughts and analysis from the first half. Get some stats and more here on RTC TV4. We'll be right back. So Watson out, and the uh, rest of the Rochester starters are out. 
Well, no, Jackson in for uh, Scorsone, I guess. Scorsone was a starter. Scorsone and Thomas had 18 rebounds combined between the two of them against North Judson. In this game, they have zero rebounds combined. Well, they're going to say that was tipped. It looked like Holloway might have just lost it. And Hawes, not even 30 seconds into the quarter, already coming off the bench, getting ready to check in for the Zebras. Great defense by Yarber. And uh, Yarber loses it out of bounds. It will be Rochester ball. So Hawes coming in for Burkett, something that uh, Coach Jennings didn't like. So Watson handling the point guard duties with uh, how to shell on the bench with an injury. And that's going to be picked off. Job Williamson pushing it up ahead and two points for Maddie Smith. The Comets get on the board first here in the second half. Lead back up to eight. Great position defense by Abby Williamson. And they're going to call foul there on Yarber. One of the 1A North Regionals played here at Caston has been for years. It's always been a real exciting venue for a regional on a Saturday. Oh, Thomas snuck in in the back. And uh, Maddie Smith had her back turned, didn't realize that uh, she was coming back there. And Thomas puts it in. Twenty-six, twenty. It's Twenty-one to go here in the third. Yeah. Yeah. Arbor's showing off some of them ball skills we saw at the uh, DYW yeah, program. Yeah, she just got her pocket picked. Jackson, that was a nice play to get it over to Watson. Jackson strong to the basket, and she's going to be fat. No, a charge. They're going to call the charge on Jackson. I don't know, Val, what do you think? Was scales set? Obviously, the Rochester crowd doesn't think so, but... It's, it, it's not really as much about being mm -hmm. set as it is about initiating contact yeah, anymore. Yeah, is, is the offensive player out of control? Yeah. Holloway gets in the passing lane, takes it away, but she loses control. Good defense that time by Maddie Smith. Scales up and in on the fast break. Back up to eight, 28-20. That actually breaks something of a scoring drought for Scales. Not counting, of course, that uh, free throw. Smith and Scales have 21 of Caston's 28 points. Oh, that's just sloppy. A little bit of a mental error there by Caston, and uh, Yarber's going to come out in the game as Mollenkoff. And I don't know if that's maybe a fatigue thing or... Or maybe the fact that she ate the floor earlier. Yeah. Yeah, she might have been coming out anyway. Jackson kicks it out. Hawes, baseline three off the mark. And the rebound, Monkoff fighting for it. Jackson fighting for it. And a jump ball called, and it will be Comet's ball. Good battle for the ball there. And a little bit of pressure here coming up from Rochester. More token than anything, it looks like. Yeah, just to get the ball out of Scales' hands. but No call on Smith's drive. Ooh, Watson might have got away with an extra step. What? I don't know how Kelly did that without traveling. Yeah. But I, th I think she did. I mean, I... 
Yeah. It was like, oh, there's here's Kennedy. I'll pass it to her. Hawes kicks it out. Holloway. Nice recovery defensively by Scales. Yeah, it looks like Holloway might be open, and uh, Scales just got out there so quick. Not an opportunity. She's going to take the three off the mark. Weak side rebound, and that's going to be on Thomas, and that will be her fourth. And that was one of those, as, you, as a senior, you want her to just know the yeah. situation because there was no chance she was going to do anything there. And yeah, and I didn't like the shot selection either. That was not really an open three-point look. That was a little bit of a force. Yeah, get, get, a, get a touch in the paint before you shoot that shot. That was... Mollenkopf, baseline, in and not out. Nope, nope. Rolls around the rim. And there is a good defensive effort. Williamson can't get it to drop. It's going to be out off of the Comets. Ooh, I, was, I wasn't sure about that one. I thought that might have gone off Watson. Yeah. Well, they're going to say it was last touch by Molenkoff, I guess. Yeah. Again, Cass is just a straight switch on the high ball screen. Smith with good defense there, deflects it. Williamson comes down the floor with it. I mean, there are not a lot of 5'10 girls who can just pop out and cover your point guard the way Maddie Smith just did. That is really good defense. And like you said, you were talking about the length. I mean, crazy. And there's Smith. She is going to get fouled, go to the line, shooting two. Calling that foul on Heinzman. It'll be Maddie's first. Maddie Smith with the free throw off the front iron. 30-second timeout called by the cast in Comets. Rio 9 to go here in the third quarter from Caston High School. Comets lead the Rochester Zebras 28-20. And they seem to have gotten a little bit back to playing basketball. It was getting a little bit rough there towards the end of the first half, at least. Yeah, it was starting to look a little bit more like UFC. Had a couple players go out and have to uh, stop some bloody noses there in the first half. Yeah, I... I, I just, I'm just very, I mean, again, the way, the way Kasten is playing defense, is the, to me, that's the story of this game. They're, when Rochester sets that high ball screen, Kasten is really well prepared for this. They're, 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 they're just jump and switch. They switch. It's a straight switch. There's not, there's not a, they're not even really even having to communicate. Mm -hmm. They just switch right away. And, and so Rochester can't dribble penetrate to the basket at all. Second free throw is good for Smith. Nine-point lead for the Comets. Is that the biggest lead of the night? Ties it, I think. Ten-point lead. They live at 13-3 back in the first quarter. Okay. I thought that might have been a double dribble. Coach Douglas not happy about the girls not getting on that loose ball, though. Watson finds Holloway. Can't put it in, though. Nice pass from Watson. And a jump ball is going to stay with Rochester. Maddie Heinzman had a big offensive rebound against North Judson the other night, and she's not afraid to stick her nose in the pile there. Jackson can't convert, and Scales rips the ball down. Rochester can't complain about the shots they're getting. Holloway misses a layup, and then Kennedy misses one in the paint. Harness three, left wing, short. Good effort that time by Williamson. And a jump ball, and it'll stay Comets ball. Good hustle play by Abby yeah, Williamson. Yeah, she just, she just was going to get the ball. I mean, Rochester missed out on a box out, and...
Yarber checks back in. And that was Abby Williamson preserving the possession. She had a big game against Rochester last year. Maddie Smith goes out. Ooh. Close call on that inbound pass. Yarber wide open, top of the key. Hines been able to track that one down. A little out of control here. Tries to throw it off of Yarber, and it will go off out of uh, bounds off of Yarber. So good job there by Heinzman. She was never really able to get full control of that ball. Yeah, she got she got caught in the corner. Rochester looking to maintain possession there. Yeah, because Yarber tried to swat it back in off of her. Paws off the mark on the three. Heinzman, though, offensive rebound. Gets it out to Watson. Stolen by Yarber. Pushed up ahead. Nice pass from Great scales pass by Harness. Scales. Wow. That was Ashlyn Brook esque. Yes. Harness not able to put that one in, but she will go to the line shooting two. Foul called on Jackson, her second. First free throw from Bailey Harness off the mark. If it gets down to it, you know, Kasten hasn't done themselves any favors from the free throw line. Mm -mm. And Dammerman going to check back in. I have Kasten four for seven so far. Guess I wouldn't have even thought it was that good, so that's not terrible, but that's four for eight. We got a lane violation on Rochester, though, so that'll give her another opportunity. <laughs> Off the front iron, so 0 for 3, basically, even though it was only 2 that counted. Jackson wants the ball, not able to find the angle. And it's going to be a turnover for Rochester. Turnover number 18 for Rochester, 10 for Kasten. That's a dangerous pass. Scales, Dammerman throws it away. Yeah, Heinzman, that's a bad place to pick up your dribble, able to get it over to Watson. Watson might have took Steph's double dribble. That was a double dribble. Yeah. She was arguing that she didn't have control yeah. of it. but uh, and Riley Holloway gave, gave the outlet pass up to Heinzman. Riley, I think, should have kept it herself. I mean, she's uh, Maddie's not an experienced ball handler. They put Maddie in a tough spot. Yeah, and that's the, the coffin corner there. You don't want to pick yeah. up your dribble right there on either side of that half-court line. Forty seconds to go here in the third. Comets lead 29-20. You know, it wouldn't be the most enjoyable thing to watch, but the Comets should probably just uh, do a bunch of passing drills right now. Just good passes. Mm -hmm. Scales off on the shot. Jump ball will go to Rochester. Let's see if the Lady Z's play it for one shot here. The problem with that sometimes is that you, you don't know how much time is left and you don't get off a good shot. Shoot her early enough where you give yourself a chance for an offensive rebound. Right. With Jackson inside, you want to get uh, get that for sure, uh, that opportunity. Jackson and one. All the way to the bucket for Jackson. Take another look at that drive by Jackson as she just bowls her way into the paint. In fairness to Molenkoff, what else do you do? 
No, not much that uh, Kinsey could do on that. Free throw up and down for Jackson. And the lead is six. Ooh, dangerous pass, Yarber at the buzzer. So after three, Caston still has the lead, 29-23. And we will take a break and come back for fourth quarter action here at Caston High School in just a moment. Thanks for watching RTC TV4 and our coverage of Rochester Zebras and the Caston Comets. Be right back. Well, the matchup advantage Rochester has is Kennedy Jackson, and they're going to Kennedy's going to be a matchup advantage most nights. So, great job of getting in triple threat position by Maddie Smith. It just couldn't finish at the hoop. Jackson tries to get it in the Hawes, not able to. Knocked out of bounds by Scales. One thing Coach Douglas is, might be a little worried about is can again can Caston just handle the physicality that yeah. has been coming at them all night. I mean, that, that was an issue at times last year. Scales comes in from behind. Jump ball called. That will stay Zebra's ball. Good defense from the backside there by Scales. And that, that was a problem for Cass when they played Pioneer last year. Just, and, of course, Pioneer, they just poor, Pioneer just wore everybody down. Right. I mean, that. Onkoff knocks it away from Jackson. Holloway drives the paint. No good rebound, Molenkoff. I, I don't get that shot. I don't. She didn't get that shot either, Val. I mean, K Kennedy Jackson has got to be touching the ball every possession at this point. I mean, who? Well, look how many games that the Comets have won in the last few years mm -hmm. with by dishing it down to uh, Sidney Klingler, and that's what that's kind of what the, yeah. the Zebras need to be doing right now. Jordan Klinger. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the other question. So Alexi Thomas comes back in. Cammie Burkett started the second half. Haas came in quickly for her. Is she, I wonder, is she hurting? Or I didn't really see why, you know, she's been on the bench. And then Thomas, that's who we're going to need for the uh, Rochester Zebras to come to life here. But she's got four fouls, so she's going to have to be smart. Mm -hmm. Lexi scored 14 against Judson. She's got four tonight. Scales gets around Watson. Good help defense there by Hawes. And then she comes up with the loose ball. Holloway, runner, no, uh, no good. Scales, Euro step. And she's going to get called for the charge. Watson takes the charge. Kali Watson stood her ground, and she gets the uh, charge call, and that's the second on scales. And the Comets really need to watch it. It'd be a pretty miserable way to end the night to lead the whole night and lose in the fourth. There's three in and out. That was a nice drive by Hawes. Found an open Holloway on the right baseline. Just in and out for Holloway. That would have been huge if that one drops. Again, Rochester's playing a zone, but they kind of got to play zone to protect Thomas. Who's in foul trouble. Williamson, a little too hard on that. Again, Casson's shooting percentage is not great, but they're getting shots. Yeah. I, I mean, we've seen Williamson make that shot before, and that was an open look. Yeah. Pause to Watson. Baseline three. Watson, good. Watson pulls the Zebras back to within one. How big has Callie Watson been in this game after How to Shell went out? Mollenkoff, no good. Weak side board. Look at Thomas. 
rip that ball down. Hawes, three-pointer, in and out. Gets her rebound. What a play by Lexi Thomas. Jackson can't get it to go. Bodies flying everywhere. Great box out by Maddie Smith. That was just... That was just a great box out by Maddie Smith. Rochester fans wanted to foul. I didn't see it. No. Just bodies flying everywhere. A full timeout called by Caston. So we'll take a break with him. And I back. love it. Refs are playing and play, letting him play. Yeah, they absolutely. Are. Be back in a moment here on RTC TV. Welcome Four. back here, Caston High School, and it has been everything we thought it would be and mm -hmm. some more. Cast with two timeouts left. We have 4:59 to go, and I. How Coach Douglas uses his timeouts is going to be key, I think, because he wants to conserve energy. I mean, not only from a strategical standpoint, but from a just conserve energy standpoint. I think this was a good time for him to call one of those timeouts because they were getting just a little out of their element. Mm -hmm. I think they need to just calm down and, and get back into their zone. Rochester definitely has uh, turned up the intensity, got the lead down to one for the Comets. Caston hasn't scored in six minutes. Rochester on an 8-0 run. It was 29-20 at one point, not 29-28. Oh. Molenkoff kicks it opposite scales. Jumper off the mark. Offensive rebound. Scales, that is some good defense by Burkett. Yeah. Scales almost got away with a hook there. Mollenkoff back up top. Scales looks to drive, kicks it out. Yarber has it. Smith drives the bucket and puts it in for two. That was a strong drive there by Smith. And the Comets come away with the steal. Yarber gets it. So that, uh, that timeout has really kind of re-energized the cast and Comets a little bit. Looking inside, Smith working around. Thomas, she knows Thomas has wow. four. What a move by Maddie Smith. Great footwork. A lot of times you see that many moves and, and you get a travel call. Thomas back the other way. Lead is back to three. Rochester in the man now. That was just kind of a lazy pass there by Scales. Scales with the block, but she's going to get called for the foul, sending Watson to the free throw line. That's Bell's third. You know, it's... Scorsone's out, Hottishell's out, and it's like the other two juniors, Watson and Kennedy Jackson, they're kind of thick as thieves, and yeah. it's like those other two are on the corner and say, hey, we're going to win this for you. Or at least we're going to try as Jackson checks back in for Holloway. We're talking about getting a little bigger on the floor. They uh, put Jackson back in. Watson's first free throw was off the mark. Got one more here. Cut it to two. And she puts it in. 33-32-31, sorry. And Watson will pick up Scales three-quarter court. Now Watson has the defensive assignment on Scales. Burke had had it earlier in the game. Callie's going to sleep well tonight. She has been running around all over the place. And then Burkett's going to get called for the foul. Again, in normal circumstances, Callie Watson might have gotten a breather at some point, but right. with how to shell hurt, I think it's... And, of course, Callie's just playing really well on top of all that. That was the fifth team foul on mm -hmm. Rochester and the second right. on Burkett. But how much defensive juice does Cali have? Yarber with Jackson on her. Now Burkett comes over. Watson almost gets the steal. Scales comes away with it off of Hawes. 
Thomas does come away with it. Rochester has four timeouts left. Coach Jennings wants to use one. He's and the foul coming on Matty Smith. Fifth team foul. That is Smith's first foul. Coach Jennings typically does not like to use his timeouts unless he really has to. Looking over the top to Thomas, and a good job that time by Harness. And a foul by Watson. And that is last, Rochester's last foul to give. Sixteen fouls on the Zebras, five on the Comets. Rochester got a basket against North Justin on a similar kind of inbounds play, but Bailey Harness was right there this time. Oh, a nice job that time. Maddie Smith. She is really impressing me, Val. Out of shell three off the mark. Weak side board to Maddie Smith. <laughs> and a reach in foul. I think is that gonna be Watson? She was the one who looked incredulous about it, so I'd say so. And that's going to be one and one for the Comets. They are in the bonus. Third foul on Watson, seventh team foul on the Zebras, and there is a timeout by Coach Jennings. All right, minute 35 to go here in the fourth. A little bit of a game reset. The Comets lead 35-31 over the Zebras. No score sewn. She got a technical. She's been on the bench since that. Hadashell goes down with an apparent knee injury. We're hoping that she's okay. But the uh, Zebras have been battling this uh, very, very scrappy Cast and Comet team all night long. Caston has taken everything that Rochester has given them, and uh, they're still ahead by four. Blair, I'm going to side with you on this, but I think 20 points for Maddie Smith is a career high. <laughs> she yeah. has 20. She has 20. She has... They have 11 this half, and she has nine. Oh, the yeah. 11. Yeah, and she's just really dominated in the post. One and one here for Isabel Scales. In and out. So an uh, opportunity here to cut into that lead for the Zebras. 90 seconds to play. It's casting defense. Jackson, and that's going to be on Scales, I think. Is that her fourth? Fourth? Wow. Jackson got bailed out there. She was a little bit out of control, kind of lost the handle on that. The start of the quarter, Scales only had one foul. Now she has four. Jackson two for three from the line tonight. So they're going to call that a shooting foul. And the first one is good for Jackson. Now a potential single possession game. Rochester will be in the bonus coming up here on the next common foul by Caston. They have six fouls. Second one in and out for Jackson. We have a whistle. Lane violation. Yeah. Bailey Harness gets called for the lane violation. So another opportunity here for Jackson. That's a... Could be a costly mistake here by Caston. Interesting. Lexi Thomas not in the game right now. Not able to get that one. So Harness gets the board. Three-point lead here approaching one minute to go. And there's going to be a foul on Burkett, and that's going to send Matty Smith to the free throw line, shooting one and the bonus. And here comes Lexi Thomas. A little offensive, defensive substitutions yeah. here. Try to get her in on the offensive end, keep her off the floor if he can. Right, and I think Coach Jennings maybe want to get it more of a pressure lineup to, to bother their ball handlers a little bit. And a little too hard there by Smith. Jump ball, it will be Comets ball.
That was big. That was big. I, I think if the Rochester, if somebody in Rochester called timeout really quickly, I think they would have gotten the timeout before the jump ball. But sixty-eight seconds left to play, three-point game. Oof. Maybe just 68 seconds. We might be going more. And oh my goodness, Maddie Smith, how good has she been tonight? Great call on a set by Coach Douglas. I've got to say, uh, Maddie Smith is going to need to go see the chiropractor. Her back's got to be thrown out from carrying this tonight. Sid Hawes. Three pointer coming back now, two point advantage. Got a full timeout. It's 30. 30? Okay. Yeah. Take another look at that drive by Smith. That was just uh, a great set coming out of that inbound. Yeah, somebody got caught up. I don't know if it was maybe Rochester defender got caught up in the wash there. Got caught up on a screen. Yep. And Kelly Watson's back was to the defender, or was to the or was to Maddie Smith's back. And if she if she had turned around, she might have been able to draw a charge, but. That, I mean, that was just a well-executed set by Cast and a good call by Coach Douglas. Cast has scored eight points this quarter, all eight by Maddie Smith. Wow. She has 11 of their 13 this half. She's got 22 for the game. Here's a zebra full-court press. This is not just token. Scales gets it across. They're going to double team her. And they're going to call a foul. Watson was trying to tie the ball up. That's her fourth. Jackson in for Burkett, 40.5 seconds to go. Comets up to Scales at the line, shooting the one in the bonus. Double bonus coming up here. Big after box this out one. here. That was a big free throw. Jackson will be shooting two the rest of the way out. Two for two, and it's a four-point lead for the Caston Comets. And Jackson all the way to the basket. Timeout, Zebras. Coach Jennings with one timeout left. Full timeout. We'll take a break with them and be back here in just a moment on RTC TV4. Welcome back here, Caston High School. 28.2 seconds to go. I'm going to start saying it in regulation. Comets lead by two, and fans here tonight have got their money's worth. This has been a dandy between the Zebras and the Caston Comets. And we've seen a lot of back and forth. We've seen a lot of seen a lot of defensive adjustments by Rochester they you know they played zone for quite for most of the second and third quarters but they've gone back to the man for most of the fourth interesting that scales is inbounding because up oh, and that was a good play yep. yeah because you're like why, why would she inbound because they're going to follow the inbound or, or their whoever receives the inbounds pass but that was a set play so scales could get it so Smith is going to get fouled and she will go to the line it will be foul two on, shots on Burkett that's her fourth tenth foul on the Zebras Three zebras sitting on four fouls now. You know, I, I just talked with Coach Douglas the other day. He talked so much about Maddie Smith's confidence. <laughs> he said she can average 15 to 20 points a game if she just plays with confidence. And my uh -huh. goodness, I was, I, I was like 15 to 20? <laughs> Here she's got 22 tonight. She scored more than half her team's points. 
And that one is smooth for Smith. Another big one coming up here for the senior. Is that 21 or 22 for her? 23. 23. Both of them. Four point lead. Jackson to the paint, off the mark. Jackson was out of bounds, but they're going to say it was out before she touched it. I think Coach Douglas is going to use a timeout here. He's trying. <laughs> Nobody was looking. <laughs> so timeout cast and Full timeout. We'll take one with them as well, and we'll be back here in just a moment on RTC TV4. Back here, Caston High School, 11.5. Comets lead 41 37. Zebra will, zebras will have the ball under their basket. I would assume that they would uh, look inside to Jackson or Thomas here coming out of this inbounds play. It's a smart play. Yeah. Unless you're looking for a three, I, I, or a Holloway might be an option. Could be Watson and Holloway cross-screening to get the other open. Holloway three-pointer, no good. And off of Rochester, going to be casting the ball, 5.1 to go. Should all but do it. We're going to put Burkett back in for Jackson. Zebra's setting up the full court press. Not much you can do down four with five seconds to go. And Sid Hawes is going to foul. He's going to send Williamson to the line. Three seconds to go. Safe to say this is a rivalry now? Yeah, I think so. And the first one is good. That might be a nail in the coffin. Can't get the good bounce. Yarber Offensive rebound. rebound, Yarber, and that's going to do it. Final score, the Caston Comets win it 42-37 over the Rochester Zebras.